Hi there. Um, I don't actually know if this video is going to come into the world or not, but um, I thought I would start doing some embroidery videos just to kind of like see how I'm progressing and share it with you. Um, as I talked about in my previous videos, this channel is becoming hobby lifestyle related. Um, and this is the first time in a long time I've actually wanted to put out new content. Um, filming the video for my... where I've been and what I've gone through um, was actually right before my follow-ups, which I'll do another video about later. Um, but my follow-ups were in February and that month pretty... <coughs> me cat hair in my throat. <coughs> um, and February was pretty much right off for me because um, I was very depressed um, about my first follow-up scans. Um, but I've started doing things again that bring me joy and so yeah the idea came into my head to record and I was like I need to go with this. So So today the project that I'm working on is actually a gift for one of my best friends for her birthday. Um, it's an Ew David um, pattern and I believe it comes from Lady Scribed. I will of course put the details in uh, the description of the finished video. Um, so I guess I'll tell you a little bit about what I've done so far and what I'm about to start doing in this stitching session today. The stitching parts will probably be sped up. Um, I'm not fancy and I don't have like an over the top view to show you kind of like what I'm doing or what it's going to look like because I'm just learning. And so um, I'm happy to do videos like that if you are interested in them. But a lot of the stuff that I do, I literally just YouTube because um, I can read the instructions, but seeing it makes a lot more sense, which is interesting because I'm generally not a visual learner. Um, so what we've got so far is we've got Ew David. Uh, this was in a, what's called a blockchain and I tried to make, you can't really tell the detail, I'll sh I'll try and like get a better picture or video of it later, but um, what I tried to do was I tried to mimic the cursive in the blockchain um, so that there are sections that are actually split. So when it starts to go around a curve, you have like the part that goes all the way up to the top of the letter and then the other part that starts to curve with the shape of the letter. I don't know if that's something that like you were just supposed to do intuitively or not, um, but it made sense to me. Um, I learned how to do the lazy daisy stitch, which I'm proud of. They're not like the most beautiful lazy daisy stitches you've ever seen, but they're my first pattern I've ever done them and I'm happy with the learning process. Um, I will say that I've heard in the past, like, try not to use metallic threads if you don't have to. And I always like laughed at them. I was like, whatever. Um, no, it's true. They're terrible. <laughs> I hate them. Um, they don't just like split into their individual threads, but like the individual split threads also split into two, which makes them a nightmare to work with. They get easily tangled. Um, they're not very, like, they look great. They, I cannot argue that, um, but they're annoying to work with. So if you have other things that you could use instead that you would j be just as happy with, I definitely recommend that. Um, the next thing that I'm doing are actually going to be some of my first uh, fishbone stitches. I've never done fishbone stitches before. I just finished watching a video on how to do them. So I've made little lines in the center of all the leaves that will require the fishbone stems. One so that I can see them um, when I'm doing them and I know which leaves I'm supposed to be doing. But also because having a midline seems to make it significantly easier. Oh, we've got a pan. Goodbye, pan. Um, but having a middle line makes it significantly easier to kind of know where you're putting the stitches because it works from uh, the center and then you alternate sides going around the curves. 
Um, so I'm not sure how that's going to look, but thankfully the friend that this is going for, what, uh, going to rather, one loves Schitt's Creek, so she will enjoy this immensely. Um, and two, she is a cross-stitcher. So she doesn't necessarily know what it's like working with like several strands of thread, but she understands that learning the creative process and learning a new hobby can take time. And she's like, don't worry, I'm gonna love it. And that's one of the many reasons why I love her. So um, yeah, I'm gonna start doing the fishbone stitch. I will start and show you progress after the first one. Um, the thread that I'm going to be using is DMC E317. Um, and that's going to be for the leaves. And it's also for some of the um, middles of the flowers. And I don't know which ones, I didn't mark them. So I'm just gonna do the fishbone stitch for now, unless I get really discouraged and then I'm gonna switch. <laughs> Cause uh, the middles are French knots, which I also don't like. <laughs> Sounds like I just don't like embroidery, but I do. I love it. Um, but I'd rather switch to French knots because I know what to expect when I'm doing them. And I don't necessarily have that same experience with fishbone uh, stitches yet. So back to stitching. The other thing I should mention is I found that in working with the metallic threads, um, I like using a needle with a bigger eye. Um, so what I've been using for the regular stitching has been just kind of like a regular sized needle. Don't ask me the sizes of my embroidery needles. I have no idea. Um, but this is a tapestry needle that I've been using just because I find it's easier to put all of the threads from the six strand floss through and then like hold them to the bottom as I'm adding in more. Um, so this pattern uses six strands for all of it. Um, if it becomes too difficult, I might go down, but so far, um, it's been successful. My lazy day, my lazy daisy stitch on the metallic stems weren't great, so I cut the threads and like redid them after I got some practice with it. But yeah, I'm both excited and nervous to see how this goes. Just drop my needle. I totally did. I just dropped my needle. Oh my god, my needle popped. I've heard that one of the ways to like get around the annoyance of metallic threads is to use shorter pieces. I'm too stubborn for that. So perhaps I'm making my own bed and prolonging my projects, but um, I don't know. I just feel at the end of the day that I'm winning and the thread is not. Um, most of the time. Uh, so yeah, there you go. I'm just finishing off my knot so I can finally get started on stitching. Okay, I just had a knot in the back and yes, it 100% happened because my thread was too long, but we're still persisting. The other thing, I totally realize that you can see behind my hoop, the back of the hoop, um, and I know it used to be a sign of like supreme stitchers in the past if you had a really nice backing to your embroidery as well. Uh, first off, I'm learning 
Um, and I don't have that expectation for myself right now. But even going forward, the back of my piece is not going to be the priority because it's about what you see on the front. Um, and so just kind of addressing that now because I know that that's already a thing in the embroidery community and I'm not here for it. You are here to show your artwork, not the back of the artwork. Do you go to a do you go to a gallery and ask to look at the back of the Mona Lisa? No. <laughs> Nobody does that. Um, I've seen the Mona Lisa in person from like six feet away because there were that many people there to see it, which like cool, cool, cool. This was also like well before COVID and being conscious of other people's health in public was a thing. Um, but no, no one goes to the Mona Lisa's to see the back of it. If you're making an embroidery and someone wants to shame you for the back of your hoop, you just don't need that kind of person in your life. Because it means they're focused on the wrong things and perhaps the negative things. So we will thank them for what they brought into our life and gently let them go. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. I'm a little bit terrified because it's a very small shape and I don't know if you'll be able to fully appreciate the fishbone design, but you know what? We are all going to lean in to our inner Bob Rosses and uh, be gentle with ourselves. Just be happy with the process, making sure that it brings us joy. I get a lot of joy at knowing that this is going to go to a friend who appreciates it, both me making the art and <laughs> the art itself um but yeah i think especially from a personal perspective you know i focus way too much on the outcomes in the past rather than the process and it's not like my entire life has changed um would be much too optimistic at this point. I'm still very much a lot of who I was, but I'm learning and I'm unlearning things. And I'm learning to just like things for what I do and how I do them and how they make me feel rather than how other people view me for doing them. That's enough of my chatting for now. Uh, I'll get to stitching and we'll see how it goes. fishbone and I guess the nice and forgiving thing about using metallic is you can't really tell um it was definitely something thank you Pam he wants to play with the thread as well so that's been fun um it was it took a little more concentration than like a short and long stitch, or a brick stitch, or a back stitch, um, you know, the usual stitches, but 
overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I think if I take my time and keep listening to my audiobook and just keep going slow, um, it'll be good. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the things that why I love embroidery is because it's forced me to slow down and this was even like before my diagnosis but since my diagnosis I really kind of tried to lean into that like going slow side of things not always like sometimes you do have to go fast unfortunately but um yeah being doing embroidery and listening to an audiobook I feel more in the moment I can take my time um <laughs> When I was going through some upsetting things uh, as I was returning back to work, um, I found that embroidery was really helpful because stabbing something inanimate is, you know, a lot better than taking your anger out on a situation or a person. Um, I'm not always known for being <laughs> the most patient. Uh, I've definitely been brash in the past, but I think embroidery has helped me realize that if I can be patient with an inanimate object that is very frustrating, um, I should be able to lend that grace to uh, the people and the things and the pets and the cooties all around me. So I'm gonna keep going with Fishbone Stitch. Uh, this will probably be sped up in the final video, but I'll be here stitching. companion who was definitely trying to play with the thread earlier and uh have to cut down that dream of his oh, me mama um but here is where these two are at i think you can tell that it's actually a fishbone stitch so that's pretty freaking cool um I'm now currently trying to decide. So like, this is how wrecked this thread got. I don't know if you can see, but it's like all coming apart. So I'm trying to determine if it's worth, he might, he might, he might do it. He might do it. Um, I'm trying to say if it's worth tying a knot at the end and starting in another one. I'd say yes, because I don't really like to waste thread. So I'd probably do it. Um, I deserve that. <laughs> and I wonder why he wants to play. I am totally to blame, but that's okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna keep going. I may have to stop at some point because I am going out shopping with my friend, uh, actually the friend who this is for, which is amazing. Um, I have to grab some face wash from Sephora that I just ran out of today in the shower, which was great. At least I got my face wash done. Um, and then I'm going to see if there's some cheekbone beauty products <laughs> at the Sephora in the mall, because I think I remember seeing that they sell them there. 
Um, if you haven't heard of Cheekbone Beauty, I'll probably do a video on them in the future because one of the other things I've been doing that brings me joy is playing with makeup. Um, never been really good at makeup. Um, grew up a huge tomboy, um, but saw, always saw it as an opportunity to be creative. Um, and I can't wait to try it. Um, and maybe show that to you in a, in a future video. So I will be stitching until this segment ends. So you'll know that that's when we went out to hit the mall. This is so tangled and terrible. <sighs> segment um because I want to watch Heartstopper <laughs> while I'm embroidering uh but I wanted to show you where things are at so I mean Pearl is not impressed in the background but uh we're sporting nap hair I have pajama bombs on this is life um but this is where we are at with the embroidery you can see that the fishbone stitches came out really well. I'm really impressed with myself having just learned these. So this is actually what I'm doing next, which will be French knots for all of the daisies that have white petals. Now, French knots are the bane of my existence because I'm stubborn and I refuse to use a thimble to uh, push the needle through. But mix in French knot being the bane of my existence and metallic thread being the bane of my existence. This is where I'm at right now, friends. Um, so I'll check in with another progress update once I get those French knots done. I'm also jumping off because I have Bibimbap coming and I love Bibimbap. Bye. Hey friends, it's me. I'm back. Um, I literally just washed all of the makeup all off of my face. So, um, there was a look today, but you're not getting it and I'm sorry. Um, but I'm coming back at you with my Schitt's Creek embroidery. Um, as I had mentioned, this is for a friend's birthday and her birthday uh, was actually yesterday as the time that I'm filming this right now. Um, and it's still not done, but we were going to meet this next week coming up to exchange gifts anyway. So I have some time. Um, but I just wanted to show you where the project is sitting right now. I'm just going to take my needle minder off so that you can um, see it. But I'm going to show you how cute is this little needle minder. Um, it's a little sloth and it is so cute. Um, it's from Jessica Long Embroidery, I believe, who I'm obsessed with her kits and they've really helped me like get back into embroidery and like keep going with it. But without further ado, um, this is where the embroidery is at right now. Um, so we're like really close to being done. Um, what I'm going in to do right now are the hearts that are around. Um, there's not a ton of them. I think there's like nine-ish in total. Um, maybe only eight. Um, but they are a lazy daisy stitch. Um, so I have to like reacquaint my brain <laughs> with what that looks like. Um, and then I am going to attempt these, which are like the circle flower thingies. Um, there is a word for that, but I, I can't think of what they are, but I'll, I'll look up the stitch in between. Um, and then it's little just accoutrements, um, little knots and crosses. So crosses. <laughs> I'm not editing that out. I refuse. Um, so it's little crosses and uh, French knots. Um, and so then 
these leaves will be kind of a goldish thread that will be in the fishbone, which um, I got pretty good at and I feel really confident doing. Um, and then I'll have to sign it and finish the back. Um, don't ask me how I'm gonna finish the back because I don't know. I'm kind of thinking of just like trimming it, putting some felt down and gluing the fabric around because yeah, I just don't want to, I, I don't like finishing hoops. I literally have a project that I have been meaning to send to my mom forever for a friend of hers to give to them as a thank you gift. All I have to do is finish the back and I still haven't done that. And I need to do that before we move so that I don't have to carry that with me. Um, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get ahead to stitching at least the Lazy Daisy Hearts and I'll figure out what the frick this flower circle thing is that I'm um, stitching because that's not the official name. are done um next thing I'm moving on to will be the floral circles which I still didn't look up the name of so I'm gonna do that take a bathroom break and come back hello I'm back I did more than just go to the bathroom but um did find out the name of that stitch and it's called a woven rose stitch so that's what's going to be going on in these circles that you see and it looks complicated although I did think that about the fishbone too um and I think that about the lazy daisy although I feel better about lazy daisies with regular thread not metallic and the nice thing is the circles will be regular thread not metallic but they will have um, French knot metallic thread centers. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, I've never done this stitch before. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm going to try one of the smaller circles because I find that as I practice the stitches, I get better. Gasp. Who would have thought practice makes you better at something crazy. Um, but yeah, I'm going to start with that and, um, we will see how this goes. I will probably pause at some point because I'm going to get sushi. Um, yeah, go me. Right. I think I talked about 
in one of my earlier videos that I use um, this tapestry needle, which has a kind of a longer eye or a bigger eye um, for the metallic threads because they get really unruly and go all over the place. But um, for the regular thread, I use a smaller needle that's um, somewhere in the span of five to 10, I think. Uh, I don't actually know what size my needles are. I always just try and use the smallest eye possible for what I'm doing. Um, and I found that after wanting to murder every skein of metallic thread, I saw that I should just cut my losses and use a bigger needle. Uh, so I use a smaller needle when I use regular thread for, because I don't need to hassle with it. So that's what I'll be doing for this woven rose stitch and I have like the longest piece of thread I've ever used in my life which I'm sure will cause me hassle because it gets tangled the longer it is but this is a process and we're just gonna <laughs> suck on the thread and think about how we don't want to do this but we're gonna do it anyway because bravery is not the absence of fear it's feeling it and doing it anyway Sorry, it just felt like that was a motivational speech time. So I'm going to go back to my audiobook and uh, maybe cry while I learn this new stitch. Stay tuned. This is way too long and I already know I'm going to regret this, but I'm doing it anyway because it's part of the process. Um, And I feel like if I go insane after this project, you can all look back on this exact moment and know that this is what it stemmed from. Nothing like good old cause and effect. Yeah. So update, there is my first woven row stitch. Um, and somehow in that little center, I have to get a French knot. I'm not gonna have fun doing that. Can confirm in advance. But I'll have fun doing the fishbone stitches. <sighs> I don't think it's too bad for a beginning, but I don't know, because I also haven't done one before. So we're gonna go on to the next one and see how many we can do with one piece of thread apparently um it's kind of calming though doing it you just kind of have to like skip every second one um so what i'm doing is i'm gonna give a little bit more room in the center so i kind of have like the slices um or like the stars already um lined out because I wasn't sure what to do, like how to um, trace th these parts of the pattern because I wasn't familiar with the stitches. Um, so I'm putting basically the spokes, if you will, on and I'm gonna go further out to the edge this time just kind of seeing how the last one ended up and seeing what comes of it 
uh, I still have a crap ton of thread, so I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Probably a bad thing, because I know I'm going to get it tangled at some point. Ugh, I have to reorganize my space. One, because sushi is coming. And two, because I need to be able to stretch out my leg. My foot is so flexed right now that it's just like, hello, I'm falling asleep. If you need me, don't. I have to make sure I grab a sweater before I go down to get the sushi as well. Don't need to be giving any delivery guys, heart attacks. Um, not that I think I would, I'm not that awe-inspiring to TBH. No! What happened? Oh, okay, everything's fine. Maybe. Don't ask me how I've gotten to this predicament other than having too long of a thread because I don't know any other answer. <sighs> Success. How close is my delivery guy? Okay, so I've done two of the five spokes so far, and like I said, I'm kind of coming to the edge of center because I'm trying, if I can, to leave more space um, for the French knots that are supposed to go in there. Oh, um, cool, cool, cool. I don't know where that thread came from, but it's going to be cut later. because I got enough shit going on. It's all mess up. Okay. Where did this come from? Here. <sighs> I just want to get the spokes done before the dip delivery guy gets here. Well, I'll probably accomplish that. Maybe. Alright, so I've finished. No, I haven't, because I'm still pulling thread. Ugh, okay. So I finished kind of the first five spokes here. I don't know if you can tell, but I tried to go, um, like further away from the center, but also closer to the edge here. Um, and for now I'm gonna pause because my um, delivery guy is here. So um, I'll pick up from there when I get back and hope that the kitties don't decide to play with my thread. Right, so um, that sushi was devoured in such a ladylike fashion. I had to um, make sure it wasn't filmed because I didn't want you all to fall in love with me. Uh, so <laughs> what I've done is I'm starting on the um, rose. So the premise of the rose, uh, once you're done kind of like the spokes, you always need an odd number of spokes, um, is that you bring the thread up as close to the center as you can and you start by going um, under the first spoke and then you go over the next spoke and then you go under the next one and over and you just keep repeating that um and that's what gives you this rose shape so i'm gonna go ahead and start doing that and see how this one turns out in comparison to the last one i mean ideally they'd be like semi-uniform um but also i'm hoping that spacing out the spokes a little bit further from the center will help make it so that like we can actually see some blank spots in the center but uh for the uh, french knot middles to go um but we'll see
Okay, so here's what's going on. I have done about three and a half of these woven roses, but I have run out of thread on this one, so I'm going to attempt to see how that pans out, but I am, um, depending on how much longer I choose to stitch, I will either, like, figure it out and keep going and then start again, or I may be done for the night. I don't know. I actually don't have much left of this, and I'm, I'm getting kind of sad, um, at the prospect, because all the stitches that are left I know how to do. Um, yeah. Mm, so sad. I know you can't see in the top of my face, but sad eyes. Um, yeah, we'll figure this out. Hey everyone, I almost forgot to show the finished product. Um, this is the, uh, Ew David. Um, embroidery that my friend is getting for her birthday. We're exchanging gifts tomorrow, which it won't be tomorrow when um, <laughs> I post this video, but I'm super excited uh, that she's going to get this and she's going to have like a good home for it and love it. Um, and I've already been thinking about how to uh, record me actually stitching in the future uh, so stay tuned for my next embroidery video. I think I'm going to be doing, um, a di I'm going to be experimenting basically instead of using, um, two ply of fabric, I'm going to try using one ply and, um, doing a felt backing to see what it looks like, but this is the finished product. So thanks for staying with me and I hope I see you back on my channel again soon. Bye.